Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined by Pastor Ken Warline, who just finished the first part in our new prayer series called Prayer Life. Thank you so much for being here, Pastor Ken. Sure. So we had a lot of questions come in and a lot of really good questions. And uh, one question that a lot of people had had to do with um, their own struggle with not having a very good father figure in their own lives. A lot of people either had an absent father yeah. or they had maybe a father who uh, just wasn't good at showing them love or maybe who was even abusive. Sure. And so can you speak to those people who might have a hard time relating to a heavenly father because of um, their own father figure? Sure. And you know, strangely, I could name some situations where people, some, to my awareness, their father really did a bang up job, but somehow in their heart or mind, the wires got crossed and, and they're not convinced of it. Um, and so, of course, none of us are perfect fathers. I think several things, um, it's still the right concept mm -hmm. that Jesus gave to us. So if something's broken, it's, it's in humanity. And perhaps the first thing that we have to do is grieve that and just get to a Christian counselor and we can help people to do that to where they can just grieve. Absolutely. I didn't get what I wish that I had had. Yeah. And the reality, I think I might be fonder of God if I had had started off with a better daddy. Um, because fathers do play a role in how our concepts of God are formed. Right. So I think we got to grieve it through the counseling process, get to somebody who can help us talk through that, who's kind of a specialist and that sort of thing. And then... Uh, um, move towards a surrogate. Okay. If not literally, um, in your heart or mind, I can think of a friend of mine who I think he would say his, his father uh, didn't come through uh, shining colors. Mm -hmm. But I just noticed over the years he borrowed my father, hmm. who was a good dad, and nobody's perfect, but he, and I, I, I kind of saw what was happening, and I think my father was on to that, and, and, and was encouraging th that type of trust and, and authenticity and that sort of thing. So moving towards a surrogate, hmm. sometimes even in a counseling situation, the, a counselor can, point to sort of helping a person do that or even I've heard of situations and you got to be real careful of, about this because the wires can get crossed and things can get weird and confusing but but uh, where the counselor even stands in and you know gives a hug and gives a blessing sort of as a substitute that somehow in the psycho-emotional spiritual realm can open up the floodgates of, of tears and just kind of get the stuff out. And th there can be some real healing. Right. So uh, give us a call at church and let's get to Pastor Dan or Tanya in our prayer ministry or Beth and l let's get you connected to some people who are good at that mm -hmm. and deal with the daddy issues because th th they will affect our relationships, even our relationship with God. Absolutely. Well, and I think it's uh, counseling is something that just has a weird stigma to it for some sure. reason. Um, and so people are hesitant. Yeah. But it's going to be really hard to embrace oh God the goodness. Father if you're still struggling with hurts and scars from your own childhood. Sure. So, well, and that's one of the reasons that, that Dan, Pastor Dan and I regularly try to use as our own illustrations, our lives that we both have benefited from counseling. Right. Just to try to destigmatize, having somebody who can speak into our lives uh, can be a, a marvelous thing. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Now, uh, another question that came in is kind of a technical question. Um, the person wants to know, where, where does the remaining portion of the Lord's Prayer come from, that right. longer ending? Well, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for right. Okay. Now, I know because of conversations that we've had right. offline, you've actually been doing some study on this. So this is pitching you a ball right over home plate. You tell us what you've been discovering. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give just a really short version. Yeah. Um, so that language actually comes from First Chronicles 29. The, it's actually a worship text. Uh -huh. And so going as far back as 90 AD, we found ancient manuscripts that um, have thine is the kingdom and the power right. and the Lord glory forever. forever, amen, associated with the Lord's prayer. And right. so uh, for almost 2,000 years, people have been using that version of the of the Lord's Prayer. And so I guess the really short answer is it doesn't really matter uh, which version you use. Um, both are, are perfectly fine. Sure. Um, yeah, and there were some differences between the Protestant church and the Catholic church, right. and, um, which is always interesting, especially if you like church history. Right. And ties in roundaboutly to what Ben was talking about last week. Absolutely. Uh, talking about all of the, the differing texts and but then getting us to the bottom line, uh, let's just go forward with the gospel, with our faith on the solid foundation that we know, that we know, that we know it is God's word. Absolutely. And so we can uh, parse out different ways to, to, to pray this prayer or that. In fact, I'm going to use the Lord's Prayer as my model when we get to the how, right. and I'm going to make the case in a couple of weeks uh, that I don't think Jesus was giving us that so that we would recite it rotely, mm -hmm. but that it was a good comprehensive model for some subjects that we should cover in our prayer, but we'll come to that in a couple Absolutely. of weeks. Excited to hear that. Yeah. It's going to be good. So another question um, we had uh, says, when you're praying, are you praying to God or are you praying to Jesus? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because of course, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God. Right. Three ways that He showed Himself to us: uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I think probably the most common is people pray to the Father, mm -hmm. probably after the example of Jesus, mm -hmm. through the Son, who. Uh, is our interceder right. um, with the power of the Holy Spirit uh, b doing the delivery in between. Mm -hmm. But I do find myself th sometimes praying Jesus, sometimes I pray Spirit, right. such and such as I do this Holy Spirit, would you please just move? Um, so the answer is yes. Yes, there you go, short and simple. All right, so now we are going to be moving into uh, some more complex questions, difficult okay. to answer questions. Yeah, right. um, and uh, this question in particular is theologically dense. Okay. Um, they wanted to know when we are praying, mm -hmm. are, do our prayers change God mm -hmm. at all? Or do our, our prayers change us? And do our prayers actually have an effect on the world around us? Sure. Do they affect the outcome of things? Um, or is God just in complete control of everything, hey, right. kind of puppeting everything around? Right. But, so what are your thoughts on that? Sure. Well, I could say, if I were God, definitively, here's how this works. Right. But obviously, I'm not. And uh, so th the answer is, I think, again, yes. Right. It's, it's, it's both. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you look throughout Scripture, and there is a lot of... Um, you know, the Lord beckoning people, welcoming people to pray. You think back to Abraham, right. who uh, was pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah. And what did he start with? 50. Right. If there's 50 righteous people, don't smite the city. And then he said, well, now, God, I don't want to be inappropriate, <laughs> but how about 40? He was what, bargaining. We, yeah. He was bargaining. Yeah. And then it's just like an old Middle East bargain, bazaar. <laughs> and how about 20? What did he get to down to 10? Yeah. If there's 10 righteous people, God, would you not? Now, you, you wish, why didn't he go further? Right. Why didn't he go to one? Uh, that's who he really cared about. <laughs> um, Moses, 
Right. You know, when God was so fed up with the Israelites who were doing the wrong things out in the wilderness and, mm -hmm. and he says, I've just got to wipe them out. And, just, and Moses is like, no, God, right. don't do it. Don't do it. Why? Because the Egyptians will laugh at you if, if they say he, their God took them out and then he just killed them all. And, you know, and so, so you look at these, these situations, it's like, it would certainly appear right. that the heart of God was being touched. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that all work? We don't know because he is certainly sovereign mm -hmm. throughout all of it. And, you know, so the best I, I've been able to do in a very homespun sort of way is I look at it this way. My son might come to me and say, Daddy, I need, I'm hungry. And I say, well, what, do you want a sandwich? Yes. Well, I'll get up and make him a sandwich. Right. Now, if he comes in and he says, I don't like our house. What do you mean? I want a two-story house. Well, do I just walk out and put a for sale? No. Uh, that one, we're going to go with where we are, right. you're going to have to be the one that's going to change uh, on this one. Right. Making a sandwich, that's not outside of my will. Selling the house, that's outside of my will. Right. Um, and um, so when we get to heaven, we'll get to find out exactly how it all works. Absolutely, yeah. We can't know all the mechanics right <laughs> no, now. It's right. Some things you just have to say. But we do no. know that he calls us over and over and over. Right. And many times says, if you will pray, then mm -hmm. I will do this. Exactly. Well, I don't think he was just asking us to enter into a charade. Mm -hmm. uh, I th think there must surely be something right. that he's wanting there. Yeah, it's almost like he's given us a certain amount of say-so and how things operate within the bounds of his own will, of his own will. purposes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Uh, it's kind of hard stuff to oh, think about. Man, mind boggling about those, it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and then our final set of questions that came in. A lot of people had these questions as well. Um, is people want to know? You know, you, you hear people talk about all the time how they hear from God and how they're praying and God answered them in this way or that way. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of people that spend a lot of time in prayer and they never seem to hear from God at all. They, they can't, or they don't feel the Holy Spirit moving in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, and there's even uh, people who um, don't know if their prayers have been answered. They can't seem to parse it out. Like, has God answered my prayer? Has he said no? Or am I just missing it entirely? Um, so how do we know um, if we're hearing from God? Um, and uh, how do we know when he's answered our prayers? Sure. And how do we know we're not hearing from ourselves? Right. Yeah. How do we know the difference? Exactly. Um, well, I'll say this. I think many times in my own journey, I've come to realize that when I'm hearing from God, uh, sometimes there's going to be a little bit more sacrifice involved than what I would have come up with in my own mind. Right. Um, there's more reassurance and just the sort of steady undergirding that, that comes through trial and error, through experimenting and saying, I think I heard from God. And we act upon that and whoops, okay, th mark that down. That was not the voice of the Lord. Right. Uh, so whatever that feeling was, keep in mind that's your feeling. Um, and I mean, there's all sorts of different ways that people hear from God, I speak regularly about sort of when I talk about hearing from the Lord. I, I don't. I've never heard the Lord audibly. I've heard of people who say I hear from them. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Must but nice. yeah. I never did. But I do. I have had experiences where I've just felt an impression. And the reason I'm kind of doing this is just kind of the thought comes to my heart or my mind. I guess I could, and even while I'm praying, right. and I'm like, Lord, what do I do? And the thought comes to my mind. I'm like, huh. Well, you know, and so there is a lot of trial and error that goes into this. Certainly we can always check what we're feeling against God's word because you know he's never going to violate his word. So the person who says, you know, I just feel like God's telling me to divorce my spouse and or to have an affair with this person or to, get, or to you know, leave my family and go start over with this new person and start a new... 
nope, that ain't God. Right, yeah. Because uh, he's not going to violate his word and he's going to call for more sacrifice from you than that you're hearing from you. Absolutely. Uh, so we can always check it against um, God's word. Mm -hmm. You know, one other thought that comes to mind, I've preached before, borrowing from another uh, preacher, there's, there's basically four ways that God answers. So you can always kind of run through this grid. Sometimes he says no. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes he says slow. Right. It's not a no forever, but right now things aren't in place. I need more time. I'm working behind the scenes, the Lord's saying. Sometimes he's saying grow. Mm -hmm. You need to grow. It's going to happen, but I'm going to allow you to stay in the furnace a little bit longer, to melt off some more of the dross, to, to grow. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes he says, go. Right. And <clears throat> so a simple little rubric uh, way that we can say, well, which, which is it? Well, it's, it's the longer we journey with the Lord, right. the more we you know, come to know his word, mm -hmm. pray his word, check our feelings, our impressions with his word and act upon this, the better at it we get. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a learning process. And yeah. yeah, and the more we know scripture, sure. the more we're able to hear Always. from him in a, in a accurate way, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. And then I've also found community can be incredibly helpful. Oh, yeah. Um, I, anytime I have one of those um, kind of feelings that you're talking about um, or those impressions. I always check with people that are older and wiser than me. What do you hear in right. this? Does this sound crazy or exactly. does this sound like it could be God? Yeah. Community of people who know the word. Exactly. Not yeah. just community that's like, hey, I think you're cool. So sure, that's good. <laughs> no, 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 but people who would shoot straight with you. Right. Um, who love Jesus and know his word. Absolutely. That's yeah, always a good safeguard too. Absolutely. Well, Confirm. thank you so much uh, sure. for being here with us, Pastor Ken. And thank you all for your questions and for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.